Hey guys, we're here today with Beethoven's a passionata. No, it's not a passionata. It's the pathetique. The grand sonat pathetique. And we're gonna look at the second movement today and just jam and have some fun. So just gonna go through this. Not very long, four pages. Very um really uh, one of the most beautiful pieces and it's not so difficult so any beginner should be able to do it and we're just going to start and see what we can do with this. One of the first things that I find really nice if you can listen to is this. So you have an E here in the second bar. Keep listening to the E. And that's just, it's so simple and it's the most beautiful thing ever. So it's kind of like um, the meaning on the note is one thing. We have this chord and then, so the meaning of this note changes when the chord changes. So that's the thing to listen to here. So this thing here, it's important to group the notes that have the same value together. So even if you have, let's say here you have those four quarters are in uh, there's a line over them that doesn't include the one from the last bar. That's always written that way. But you have to put these six notes together. So you have... So it's possible to make this a little longer, but then have to be all exactly the same going towards the E. So you have this goes like this to here. And then you just when you think it's over, it keeps going. Fourth bar, four, one, two, three, four, five. phrase that lasts eight bars. Sometimes it can help. You might play it slower than this, and, and that might be a good thing, or anyone might, but something that can be useful sometimes is to just play it fast to have an idea of what this is. Then we can really feel I understand the whole phrase. Okay, we didn't look at this so much, but I don't know why I have to go into too much detail here. This video is going to be really long. Um... Well, one thing that we've seen in uh, just the last video I made uh, about different editions, there's really very, very, very little written in this score. And if you have all kinds of things written, just be aware that they're not written by Beethoven. And if you look at uh, the first edition, uh, there's nothing in it. There's really nothing. There's just, you know, the, the few things that are here in this, which is the Budapest uh, Kernman edition. Four, five bucks? You won't believe where I bought this. I bought this at Costco. <laughs> Who gets scores at Costco? So, whenever you have something like this, always resolve. It's maybe one of the most common mistakes that, that people make. Um, is this. So then these you have 
staccatos. So how do we do staccatos? Does not really do it justice. So you have to think of these as German staccatos. They're less short than the Italian ones. So they're more like... Not so... Now, here technique-wise, if you go in on these... It's going to stick out those notes better. forte and things like that in this. This is this is the challenge and I think it's a kind of uh, hard not to do because we want to go louder than before. There's more notes and maybe it's a micro bit louder and then something. it's just too loud. So we need to save all of this. It's very very soft. It stays in, in this atmosphere where there is actually it doesn't even write any dynamic whatsoever which is kind of strange usually he tells us piano at the beginning so that's very interesting okay we've done this now video about the additions. I like to do this. It's kind of like a long horizontal line. A micro crescendo. No crescendo actually. It's just a direction. It's just a, a focus. With this thing here. And what you can practice is just playing this, but in a way that it's going somewhere. where we have something different that happens. How does this go? That's not, that's not your problem usually. This one usually is. So, if it's not written in your uh, score, two, three, you should have one, two, three, then you have together on the fourth, and then, and if you would do that on the beat, it doesn't really, I don't think that works. So this is the sort of thing when I was young, I did not play the right way. It just didn't make sense to me, so. place the beats, know where the one and the two and the halves are. So one, half, two and a half. That's going to really help. So you have one and two and one and two. Listen, here's what I used to always play and I'm sure I was not the only one. Pickup. So if it's confused, if it might be confusing to you, it's bound to be confusing to the listener. So you have to show it. Maybe not that much, but you have to show something on this D here. And you can use the shape because Beethoven isn't stupid, he writes it also this way for a reason. So, 
places the C also on the next, the last half beat. So we can feel it. Two and one. Now we have the first, first, first dynamic in the whole thing. Crescendo. So another thing that you might miss in these things, a little detail that's very important, is anywhere you have silences, be really vigilant about it in, in everything, but especially classical music, Baroque music, and Beethoven, absolutely, absolutely. You have to be very... Exactly what's written. So this Beethoven does all the time. He puts a crescendo and then followed by a piano all the time. So you have to do it. It's like he's going somewhere and then it's different. Make sure this is more and more and then two for this because this is just going to be too long maybe even a part three okay so that's it so that's part one of second movement beethoven pathetic sonata opus 13 number eight i think whatever that's it